typical day on set uh, for compositing. Um, we'd generally start pretty early. We'd get our uh, content delivered by DNEG, which would be like giant lat long spherical renders. We would take those um, going off the storyboards and the animatics. We'd then sort of choreograph a, a, like a previs that would be ready. We'd present that to the director, see if he likes it, and that would be basically our starting point. That would go to the uh, LED operator. He would then program, you know, and he'd do all these moves and color corrections and we'd basically set up for the shoot. The challenge is with working with the, with the in-camera plate and with all of those eight minutes long spherical renders what we provided to the onset uh, people to be able to shoot these shots was that once we received the edited cut we needed to basically figure out which portion or which part of that render was used on set when we needed to kind of improve that background a little bit or we needed to kind of add some extra highlight detail back to the background or we needed to put some extra detail in between the LED screen and the gimbal or the, the actual model that was used because sometimes we needed to add, add some extra elements to make it look like we are really flying through clouds, for example. I think it was pretty important for uh, compositing to be on set. Just, just the nature of the show and the way uh, we had to manipulate the data and do the rotations, it just wouldn't have been possible just to stream that, that, um, that info as quickly as possible as we had it. We had to be just basically as uh, adaptable as the crew was, you know, for change as things uh, progressed. The original concept we had with the, uh, the archival footage when we uh, got it was to take some of those shots. We were going to sort of recreate that using the usual methods of recreating with CG and effects and uh, build those shots. But um, as we kept watching them, it became quite apparent that they were just so, uh, so rich and detailed. You know, it was just like we weren't going to really get that kind of energy from the, from the footage. Some of this stuff was 10,000 frames long, running at like, speeds of 500 frames a second. So it just became very apparent that we should just use that and uh, use that as our base to uh, you know, evolve the uh, sequence. What was really unique about compositing for the, the launch sequence was just, just the fact that it really covered all facets of our discipline and what we do. Mixing old techniques with new techniques to take a shot from its birth and then all the way to completion was uh, quite an interesting process, yeah. I would really like to work on another show where we are using the same kind of in-camera technique simply because, because it gives you certain things on the image, on the plates and it doesn't matter if you, you have to change that content later on you are still going to have all the details on, on every reflection or reflective uh, kind of set pieces but at the end of the day your actual final image is going to be like amazingly nice. I can't imagine to have this kind of quality with like blue screen or green screen. I think for me just a personal highlight was just being able to um, be on set and uh, you know take the compositing and use it as a discipline and just, just putting it somewhere else and, and finding new ways to, uh, to do what we do. We had a, you know, an amazing team and everyone uh, you know pulled their weight and we uh, you know come out with a you know, a, a great film. Yeah. 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 Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. <laughs> I mean, without, without the compositors, what we had on the team, I think we just couldn't finish this. And everybody That's else. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs>